coming out our release is June 21st so we're uh, less than two months away I just realized that we're about seven weeks away so yeah it's really close so a lot of craft distilleries obviously you need to have some cash flow after you open up it takes three years plus to make whiskey so white spirit is a great way whether it's you know vodka or gin a lot of craft distilleries do it as a, as a way to keep the doors open until the whiskey arrives what made you so passionate about crafting and award-winning Gin that was unique? Uh, the simple answer is I didn't like gin. It's a terrible <laughs> thing to say. I didn't like gin before we started the project. But vodka is, I apologize to the vodka drinkers, truly, but vodka is a soulless liquid that lacks any character <laughs> and any identity. That's true. It's, it's, it really is. Like, and, and I always say if, if people really love orange juice, now I'm going to be talking. So if people really like orange juice and you don't want to ruin the flavor of orange juice, you add vodka to it. It doesn't change the orange juice. But it's not a cocktail. It's just orange juice with alcohol. If you want your orange juice to have uh, flavor and character and definition and be a cocktail, you add gin, you add whiskey, you add rum. You add something that's going to add to that cocktail. So for me, gin was something we could make in a short period of time. We could be creative with, uh, put our own signature on it. So for me, I made a gin that would appeal to non gin drinkers, which was me. And now I certainly appreciate gin in, in, in a better way. But, uh, yeah, that's a long answer. <laughs> no, that, uh, but so, so, why a cocktail gin? And what is a cocktail gin? So, for me, the London dry styles of gin just didn't hold up really well in a cocktail. So, there's some great gins out there. London dries make great gins, they make great dry martinis. I don't think they make the best dry martini. Uh, but we're in a different era now, so we needed a gin that held up to the bold ingredients that we're seeing. So we make a fabulous Negroni with Campari and Vermouth. We stand up really well, but there wasn't a lot of cocktail gins that were out there. And we had this cocktail revolution that was happening. So I wanted to make something that was bold and rich and would stand out from the crowd as opposed to recreating the next London Dry sign. So without getting too massively geeky, Making a cocktail gin where you're retaining a lot of that rich oil and character, what are you doing differently in your distillation process that is capturing all of that flavor and keeping it as part of the gin? Certainly. So I think the volume of the botanicals that's in there is a big difference. So if you're using a lot of botanicals, you're going to get a lot of oils out. But we do a maceration soak. So uh, we put all our botanicals into the high proof alcohol, soak it overnight for a minimum of 12 hours. And then we run it through the still in a traditional pot still. So we have a rectification column, but we use a pot still. And that allows us to retain all those essential oils and put them through into the final product. So which gives us that really rich oil we can. Which is what makes it delicious. delicious. <laughs> Who doubted me? Oh, what a shame! My success 
Sometimes it's trouble, once I'm planning it.